What's going on everyone? Andrew from Riddler Reptiles back with another one. Monitor month continues. So our boy Ragnar here is still the star of the show for another couple of weeks. So this one, as you can tell by the thumbnail and title, um, it's a rough care guide for rough neck monitors. So this is the basics, okay? I've, I'm gonna say it a few times. I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional. This is just what I researched before getting him. This is what I've experienced with him. And this is also what I've been told through my new monitor friends. Um, shout out to you guys. Now, before we carry on, I'm gonna say this at the very beginning instead of the end. If you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. It goes a massive way to help me out. Um, notification bell, that will let you know every time I upload. Uh, any likes, comments, shares, anything like that is greatly appreciated. Uh, it really does help, so thank you. Uh, but with that being said, let's get on with it. Uh, like I said, it's very basic, very rough. Uh -huh. um, let's see, you know, let me know what you think below. Let me know if you've kept a Rudy before. Let me know if you want to. Any monitor experience you've had, share below. Um, but otherwise, let's get on with the video. So... Black Roughneck Monitors, Varanus Rudicolis, come from Southeast Asia, including places like Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. These are obviously very tropical regions, uh, very temperate, so they do need good heat and fairly high humidity. So when we're looking at temperature gradients and the temperatures that they bask, your hottest basking spot should ideally be between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius. I'll put up a little snippet to see what that is in Fahrenheit as well. Um, and preferably an ambient temperature around about the 30 degrees Celsius, but not too much of a problem because obviously they can thermoregulate. So obviously heating and UVB is essential. In my current setup, I am using two mercury vapors, uh, 150 watts a piece. But when it comes to Reptile Room 2.0, what I'll be doing is going for T5 UVB lamps, heat lamps and LED lighting, just to brighten things up a little bit and make it a little bit more exciting. So roughnecks are arboreal, which basically means that they do enjoy climbing. Um, there are reports of roughnecks being spotted in the wild, being as high up as 80 feet in trees. So climbing opportunities are essential. But what I'm not saying to you is you need to have an 80 foot high enclosure. Now, one thing I will say is on a lot of these care sheets online, I have seen a couple of them say that you can have a minimum enclosure size of six feet by two feet by two feet for a Rucolis. This is nonsense. Going for a six by two by two is purely for a juvenile. I've had Ragnar for near on two years now, and I can tell you that he uses every inch of space in that enclosure. My enclosure is eight feet across, by five feet high, by four feet deep. It's obviously two tiered, so slightly different on the right hand side, but please do not house a fully grown or adult Rudicolis in a six by two by two. It's just not fair. Now, one thing a lot of people will do is they will look up what the minimum enclosure size is for any sort of animal. I'd highly suggest not doing so if you can't afford to keep a Rudicolis or any monitor for that fact or for that matter in a big enclosure, then I probably wouldn't bother having one. Uh, it's not fair on the animal if they're cooped up in something small. So just make sure if you're going to get a big monitor to keep it in a nice big enclosure. So when it comes to water for these guys, obviously I've mentioned previously that they come from uh, humid tropical temperate areas so you want the humidity to be fairly high not only do you want the humidity to be quite high you also need to give them opportunities to swim so rudicolis actually love spending time in water and to be fair after the research i've done i found out that actually they've developed scales in their nostrils that can shut whilst they're submerged in water so they really can stay in there for a long time I've caught him asleep in the water, which caught me quite off guard. But yeah, he was more than happy to just stay under there for a very long time. So I make sure that he's got two sources of water. He's got his big drinking bowl up in the top section. And he's also got a big pool in the bottom section. So let's look at substrate. So in Ragnar's enclosure, unfortunately, I've not been able to complete it. It is a work in progress, like I've said. But the bottom half is a 50-50 mix of uh, child's play sand and organic topsoil 
with orchid bark on top of that and a load of leaf litter thrown in as well. On the top half, it is only orchid bark and um, leaf litter. So the reason for uh, substrate like this is because Rudy's do like to dig. Um, obviously, if it ends up being female, it could end up laying eggs. So it needs a place to dig. And to touch on it very briefly, one of the biggest killers in any female varanid is uh, egg binding. So what you want to do is supply a nice big nesting box with deep substrate that's heated with a gradient of 25 to 32 degrees. I won't get into it too much, but also this substrate does need to be mixed and moved uh, to stop any bacteria from forming. Um, but you never know. That will do for now. But who knows, in the future, maybe we will go into... Uh, substrate and nesting a bit deeper watch this space so obviously with regards to these animals um and like i say raising them from a young age ragnar is a wild caught monitor roughneck monitors are not bred very much in captivity i think you have a few in the us that are breeding in captivity and i think at the time of recording this there's one person that successfully bred them in captivity in the uk so if you're going to get a roughneck monitor, the chances are it will be wild caught. Now, the problem with wild caught is they do come with their problems. They can come with parasites problems. They're stressed out from being taken out of their environment. Um, you are possibly looking at higher vet bills if you get a wild caught animal. I have been very, very lucky with Ragnar. He's been absolutely fine. No problems. Weeing, pooing, eating, sleeping, drinking, everything absolutely fine since I've got him. Um, again, and that's me saying to you, I've been very, very lucky with that. Um, so if you do, that the thing is you need to be realistic. And also if you do get a wild caught, a lot of people will see them. I mean, at the minute he's fine. He's, he's, this isn't me, but a lot of people will look at a wild caught monitor that's sitting doing nothing and is being handled and say, oh my God, that's really tame. A word to the wise and a word of warning, that is nine times out of ten down to stress. If the animal's lying there with its eyes shut, not doing anything and acting almost tame, that is stress, okay? A monitor that's not stressed out, that's been wild caught, is probably going to be huffing. It's probably going to be tail whipping. It's probably going to be trying to bite, run away. Um, so just be careful. That's not me saying that any monitor you get that doesn't run away is stressed. But you do need to be mindful of any body language, things like that. Like him at the minute, all right, he's not flicking his tongue, but the eyes are open. He's watching me. That's fine. He knows who I am. He's seen me in here. I've recorded many videos in front of him. He's not bothered. Um, but yeah, just a word of warning. A lot of people will say, oh, I've got my wild caught monitor and he's really tame. It's not. It's really stressed. So just be very mindful of that. And it's normal. OK, this isn't me calling you a bad person for having a wild caught monitor. That would make me a hypocrite. Um, but just be very mindful. What a beautiful animal. So let's get to feeding. Uh, Varanus ruducolis, roughneck monitors, are mainly insectivorous, but they are an opportunistic feeder and they will take pretty much anything you offer. Uh, examples of this, the main diet that Ragnar is on is hoppers, as you can see here, that are dusted with calcium and vitamins. Um, he's tried dubia roaches, which I did, well, I thought I filmed, but ended up, it turns out I hadn't pressed record and got cut up on my arm. So that was nice. Thanks for that. For no reason. Um, fish, um, chicks, will definitely eat chicks, eggs, grubs. Uh, I will admit I have given him chicken, uh, raw chicken. Um, and he does enjoy that. But again, that's a very, very rare treat. So what you want to make sure of is you're not feeding primarily rodents and things like that because monitors are susceptible to fatty liver disease. They will eat it. Um, one thing that did make me laugh um, when I was doing my research and obviously since getting Ragnar is it said to feed them until they stop eating and then remove any uneaten food. Now, if I was to feed Ragnar until he stopped eating, he would blow up. And with that being said, remove any uneaten food is laughable because there isn't any uneaten food ever. Let's talk about enrichment. Being a monitor lizard, this is a very, very intelligent animal. So you need to make sure that those cogs are turning and he's not getting bored. At the end of the day, we're keeping these animals in boxes for our own amusement. We need to give them as good a life as possible. 
So what do I do for enrichment? So I quite like to hide food. I like moving things around the enclosure, changing and adding things to his enclosure. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is just let loose the hoppers into his enclosure. So they hide in the leaf litter and he has to hunt for them himself. I've also done a video where he had to use a puzzle feeder to get some food out, which he did really enjoy and was very good at. Um, he is also target trained with a blue ball. So that is, I use that primarily when he's eating things like chicken or chicks or rodents, which like I say, is a rare treat. Do not overfeed these guys on treats like that because it's just not healthy for them. So one thing I will touch on as well, which is usually quite a popular question when it comes to any animal, is how tame can they be and can you handle them? The short answer is only if they want to. So I'm going to put a clip here now where Ragnar is on my arm. So that's only because I offered him my arm to see if he wanted to climb up. I've spent enough time with him that he knows I'm not a threat. Uh, and he climbed up on my arm of his own accord. Now, this isn't always the case. Sometimes when I offer him my hand, he does this. So yeah, it doesn't work all the time. If you want an animal that's just going to be sitting on your shoulder and be friendly and handleable, even from the get-go, I'd say get a bearded dragon because a monitor lizard sometimes just doesn't want anything to do with you and that's absolutely fine. So don't go into it with the intention of having a friendly shoulder dragon. It's possible, but not very likely. Their lifespan can be anywhere between 10 to 20 years, probably closer to 15 to 20 years if the correct care is given. Uh, that's obviously no overfeeding, ideal heat sources, all of that, the good humidity, everything I've gone through so far. So it is a commitment. If you're going to get a roughneck monitor, you need to be in it for the long run. Uh, you basically need to say to yourself, do I have that much time to be giving to a lizard? Some people will say yes. Some people will say no. If you say no, I wouldn't bother. Um, size wise, these guys can be anywhere between three and a half to five feet long. Depending mainly on their sex, uh, males will get bigger and have been seen to be pushing five and f five to five and a half feet long. Females, you're probably looking a bit smaller, maybe four to four and a half feet. So I think I've covered everything there. If you've got any questions, feel free to qu uh, ask them below or uh, directly DM me on Facebook, Instagram or any other social media sites we're on. Uh, and I will try and get back to you. If I don't know the answer, I will do my absolute best to guide you to someone who does. Like I say, I'm not an expert. I'm just going off of what I have experienced with Ragnar. So it's more of a basic, and like I made the pun before, a rough guide on how to look after rough neck monitors. So that's it. I think that was all right. If you If you agree or disagree with anything, let me know below. Uh, if you've enjoyed it again, let me know below. Uh, we have one, possibly two videos left for Monitor Month. Not 100% sure yet. Uh, but I've really enjoyed filming this stuff for Monitor Month. Clearly, you guys have enjoyed watching it because they're my highest viewed videos so far. Shout out to you. Shout out to Ragnar for being that guy for me. Um, but yeah, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, any likes, comments, share, subscribe, all of the good stuff. Uh, it goes a really long way. and It's a massive help. Uh, so thank you. Uh, big shout out to each and every one of you for all of the support. It does really go a long way. Um, and I continue making content. This is what we're here for. You know, Riddler Reptiles, here to make content. But yes, thank you to all of you. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Andrew from Riddler Reptiles. Andrew from Riddler Reptiles, a peace out.